Hey everybody, Eric here. And today I wanna to share with you a few of my tips for setting up a template in layout, which will pretty much make an automatic drawing set for you. So what I mean by an automatic drawing set using templates is that we know when we set up construction document or conceptual design sets or mood boards or whatever it is that you use layout for is that a lot of times we know that certain things are standard to our practice. So if we know, for example, that we're gonna be cutting elevations every single time, we need a plan view every single time, well, we can create our own custom template. But beyond that, we can also attach that template to a SketchUp model so that not only do you have the pages set up in template, uh, in your layout template, but you'll actually have the model cuts already there too. Now, let me, maybe it's better if I just show you what I'm talking about instead of tell you. So let's just get right into it. So it's kind of a, this is kind of a two-step um, process. Number one is I wanna share with you sort of the value of working with templates. And number two, I wanna connect it to a SketchUp model so that we can automate the creation of a document. So I already have here a template set up. I'm gonna walk you through that in a second, but for most of you, if you're, or if you're new to uh, layout, you'll know that you're prompted when you start a new layout file, you're starting with a template actually, but most of these are blank templates. So they're basically just page sizes that are already set up for you. So you don't have to change you know, the paper size afterwards. Now we also have a section called my templates. So when you create a template, it gets saved here. Now I've got one here, it's called EMS page setup. And I'm gonna share, I'm gonna show you that one right now. I've got that open. So I'm used to working in InDesign. So I created a template that has um, a few things already in it. Um, I work more on the conceptual side of things and not so much sort of a CAD oriented thing. So basically a little higher level when it comes to documentation. So you can see I've set up some guides that sort of help me with my grids so that if I was to come in here and I don't know, use this for uh, image layout and then copy this, I know that everything is equally spaced. I know that I can get sort of a nice grid going. So having this um, sort of these guides already in my template file is helpful. The other thing is, is I have my text and graphics and I have my SketchUp model. So I've set up the layers for those. I've set up some text, including some auto text, which I'll have to do a different lesson on just working with text and auto text, if that's something everyone's interested in. Some scales, some legends, north arrows, just some default graphics. Now I could technically store this into a scrapbook, but something nice about having it right in this, this template page is that I can just pull it, I can just copy it and paste it. I don't have to even open up scrapbooks, but can totally do that too. So I've also got that, those are my layers that are pre-set up. I've also got some pages set up. So this is just a typical blank page, but I've got here, in this case, I've already set up plan and um, auto text is already set up so that the page name references the name of the actual page. So if I change this to, for some reason, plan view, or wanted to call it something else, or floor plan, you can see the auto text updates. So I've already set all that stuff up in advance, knowing that firstly, most of my projects will have these standard names, but then using auto text, if it changes, that's perfectly fine. And you can see I've got a plan view already in here. It's just a placeholder plan view. I've got my grids and guides. So if I wanted to come over here and just take a second and sort of align that better with my grids and guys. So it's centered. I can do that. That looks fine to me. Um, a perspective view, that's just a placeholder because any, every project you work on is gonna have different perspectives, but just put one in there just in case. And some elevations, basically the typical elevations that you would expect for a house. So that's, here I've got a placeholder model though. So that, that was the first, sort of tip that I wanted to share, which is basically is we can save all this stuff. You can set up a document set. And even if you have an existing model in there, you can still save that to a template. File, you come over here to file, save as a template, give it a name, something like, um, you know, EMS, that's me in document setup or document sheet, whatever. And of course, if I wanted to call it 11 by 17, or uh, whatever, anything that's gonna help me remember that this is sort of my standard document set. And I'll save that. And then next time I come over here to open file, in this case, I'm gonna create new, new from my templates. 
And here, this is EMS document doc use sheet 11 by 17. That's the one that I just saved just now that you saw me do. So that's great. It's there. All that work that I did, it's going to be available to me at any point in time. And of course, I can have as many different templates for different page sizes as I want. So the real fun is here, this next step. Now I'm going to pop, I know this is beyond desktop and we're focusing on layout, but there's such a strong connection between layout and SketchUp that I want to pop back into SketchUp briefly to switch this model out here. You can see that I've got some section cuts or some elevations showing, but it's not telling me very much. And that's because this is a placeholder model. So if I pop over to SketchUp briefly, you can see that this is the that placeholder model. It's just a, I don't know, cube with a pitched roof. So I know what is up and I've already cut. You can see if I toggle on my section planes, you can see that I've saved uh, a different scene for each for perspectives, um, which you can't really see because the perspective angle was taken sort of, uh, I'll update that. Maybe the perspective angle needs to be fixed, but that's okay. I'm going to have to change those anyway. And then each of the elevations for my typical views that I would want to cut. Again, if I toggle those on, I can see that that's the elevation that has been cut. Now let's get rid of this little placeholder house here because that one really doesn't do me much good. In fact, I'm going to leave it there because I want to know for some reason I placed it. This is where I placed it. So I do want to, when I add my proper building, the project that I'm working on, I want to replace this, but let's go ahead and grab that. I'm going to pop over here. I'm working on a little design for an, a garage renovation, let's say, and then I'm going to place that. I'm going to place that pretty much. I'm going to try to center it. I don't have to, um, but I'm going to try to kind of center this somewhat on where those sections are cut. That'll just kind of help me know that things will sort of line up. Now, again, I may have to adjust. Every project's going to be different. You may have to adjust the section cuts, but most of the work has already been done for me. I'm just going to delete that little placeholder house and just save this file. And you'll see why in just a second. So you'll notice I used a keyboard shortcut, but you can just go file save. And if I double check, you can see here, if your section cuts aren't showing, this happens sometimes. You just double check in your style. Make sure that section cuts are turned on in your style. So I'm gonna click update that style. I'm gonna turn section planes off, section cuts on, update that style. And that way, when I cycle through all of my saved scenes, you'll notice I didn't have to set up any perspectives or I didn't have to set up any elevations. I didn't even have to set up my plan view. That was already pre-set up as part of my model template. I'm gonna save that, pop back over to layout. And I mean, that was kind of tricky because you didn't even see, before when we were in layout, there was a placeholder. And now when I popped back over to layout, it automatically updated. So I'm in that same template file that I just set up. So I haven't done any work to this file. All I did was replace that SketchUp model with my new garage model. And I can click through my views. There's my plan view. If I want, if it's easier, I can turn my guides off for this. Here's my perspective view. Now, if I don't like that perspective view, because that doesn't really tell me anything, I have to go into SketchUp and change that, which I might. Uh, same thing, once I'm done kind of moving things around the page, I'll turn my guides off and it'll remember. Perspective view number two, elevation, guides off, elevation east, guides off, elevation north, and lastly, south. So you can see that all that work, um, as far as the date, today's date, the page number, the name uh, of the page, all of that was set up as part of my template with auto text. So Basically, within just a, about a minute or two, I have a fairly good working document set that I can then start to annotate. So I'd go back into whether it's in my scrapbook or whether it's in my template. If I wanted to grab some text and I wanted to grab um, a scale and maybe a legend, I'm going to copy that, pop back over here and start to finish, you know, start to lay out my sheet the way that I think. Um, the way that I think would be cool for this particular project. Now, again, if I knew what this, if I always work on a certain pro size project, then I may have the scale and the north arrow and all of that. That could all be part of the template. Um, but in this case, I'm kind of giving myself some flexibility, knowing that the projects that I work on will change scales. 
and um, maybe change page sizes. So in this case, I want to prethink some stuff, but I don't want to prethink too much stuff because then I'll just lock myself into um, into a hole a little bit and have to make those changes later. So that's pretty much it. Pretty cool. I think it's cool. So I said that's it, and that is it. So real quick recap before I, I let you go is that I wanted the point of this of this video was to reinforce the power of two things, which is setting some stuff up in advance. So setting scenes and sections up in your SketchUp model. And then of course, setting up some pages or some auto text, going and grabbing some of the symbols that you know you use regularly. You can grab those things, set up your pages, and then that work that you did if you know you're going to reuse that style, that page, or that template, save it as a template. And then literally all you need to do is replace the placeholder or even just point to a different SketchUp model and everything else just updates as well. So it doesn't save you, it doesn't do everything for you, but it automates quite a bit of the process and you've got a great working document to start from, to start your annotations on. So as always, I hope that you find at least just one thing useful in this video. And uh, whether you did or didn't, let me know in the comments. Let's keep the conversation going there. Do you use layout a lot? Have you found that you've got, uh, that you get the learning content that you need for layout? Have you been hesitant to try jumping in layout? Maybe this will help, you know, sort of ease that learning curve for you. So jump in, give it a shot, try this out, and then come back and comment and let me know what you think. And while you're at it, don't forget to give us a like, a share, a subscribe, and um, keep an eye out. We do this every single week. I will see you next time. Thank you.